Welcome to Sequel Guys. I am so stoked to be back this week. I am doing a sequel to District 9. I am James. My name's Blaze. Let's get into it. I do not have a title though. First things first. District 9.2 yeah. <laughs> or District 9 Part 2. I did not want to go to District 10. I was just like, oh, I it's so that's this. such a cringy title. Yeah. District 10. Like, yeah. okay, do you just you can count? Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Then, like, because then you feel the need to make District 11, District 12, like, just like, yeah, that just sounds dorky, I feel like. And, uh, Baby's first franchise. Yeah. And, uh, also where I'm going with the sequel, like, it doesn't make sense to call it District 10. So, yeah, I'm going to go right into it. Uh, Oh, you call it Elysium. Yeah. Elysium. That's a good point. Yeah. (laughs) Or just some really long word, maybe. Yeah. Elysium colon Chappies lives. (laughs) Yeah. Chappy, yeah. and then uh, uh, a studio goats or what is a studio gross? Oh, oats studio oats there oats studio gross. I can't believe I said gross. <laughs> Buckwheat gross. <laughs> so this movie's gonna pick up uh, years after uh, what happened in District Nine, though. So as we saw in Johannesburg, uh, what's it called the? The UFO left after, um, I think the car- the alien creature's name was actually like Christopher or something. Yeah. Yeah. It um, was able to get the UFO to go back home and he promised Wiccas he would be back. Mm-hmm. But that storyline I feel like is done. You could throw in Wiccas in there maybe as a human, maybe he did come back, but I'm going to skip that. Uh, I'm going to bring back like the documentary style. Like I want it to be taught by like history teachers or, or narrated by history teachers essentially. Cause this one's going to play a big part in our history. I'm going to try to throw in some current politic stuff in there as well. So with this sequel, there's going to be a lot of offspring from the prawns, uh, prawns essentially. Uh, yeah. Or a lot of spawn of the prawns. Yeah, there we go. The spawn of the prawns. There we go. District nine colon spawn of the prawns. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the help man i love it <laughs> uh so they have kind of like left johannesburg now essentially they've like been fighting for their rights um they have like In washington now, shit. yeah they've now become like a new race essentially within earth and mm-hmm. so that's where i want like a lot of like racism like to kind of like a uh, racism uh what's it called uh Crown lives matter yeah uh, stuff like going along there um but this one i want it to take place in uh in uh, mexico actually mm-hmm. they've like i know like the it took place in south africa they've kind of grown like they've gone to like you know further up the continent now made their way to europe also um but they have not made it into the u.s of course also though there's big a u.s bit, has too, stopped people like th- they're deporting all prawns and shit yeah there's too big of a wall some have snuck in and stuff some they are they have their rights to visit and stuff but they're technically not allowed to like live in the u.s but they're uh big in mexico i feel like i want it to take place in mexico uh being latino also i'd love to see like you know just strong latino cast also mm-hmm. i feel like that'd be awesome diego luna diego <laughs> luna yeah no uh where's uh uh garcia Gar- gal garcia bernal yeah, yeah. where does where the is other he happy you to mama tambien <laughs> yeah <laughs> So uh, I, either way, though, it'd just be cool to see um, some more Hispanic actors uh, and actresses in the movie. Mm-hmm. So I want like uh, it to be narrated about the, like the revolt between like prawns, like trying to fight for their equal rights, trying to make their way into the United States. So, like because like they've heard like all the pastime of how like America is the land of the free and they can't get in and stuff or mm-hmm. something. And uh, does it have to be like a crazy like war movie or something like i don't want it to be big on action but like i just want them to try to like maybe it could be like a just like a they do like do a terrorist statement like uh, essentially to like make a statement on how like they should be able to be allowed anywhere Mm -hmm. and some of the stuff that they have to deal with like Mm -hmm. maybe uh some of the prawns actually uh, like uh planned out an attack on their own kind actually just to like uh develop like oh we need to help protect them and help save them Mm-hmm. But really, like, it was actually an act on terrorism against themselves, like, the whole time. Yeah. Dude, that could get pretty heavy. I like the idea, like, I came up with just the idea just now of, like, the fact that maybe the wall got built and it's so big that the only thing that can scale it are prawns. So yeah. prawns basically become the new uh, coyotes yeah. where they, like, help 
like either Mexican immigrants or uh, yeah. or other prawns like get into the U.S. Yeah. I do like that. And I also like, uh, I would figure, of course, of course, that the prawns are living in America, though there's illegal ones and stuff. So that's like another thing, like just bringing in, you know, the uh, immigration, like, you know, uh, crisis that everyone's always arguing about. And mm-hmm. Like uh, that could also, yeah, bring in like a cool little scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that people really love about District 9 is like it had that social message. Like I think a lot of the like most your most favorite films usually have those like get out. Yeah, it's like a huge message Mm -hmm. Um, like District 9. That's definitely some of my favorite stuff from it was like the everything on apartheid. Yeah, but then it's also like this kind of it's not really I wouldn't even say it's a fun movie to be honest. No, definitely not. It's actually like really distressing and the saddening. action scenes are actually really gory like a lot of people uh, like i don't know if people remember but that's actually one of the gorier action movies we've had in recent years mm-hmm. like, yeah we get a lot of rated yeah. r action movies but that was a hard r you see like decapitations and heads exploding and yeah yeah limbs being lost it was a pretty oh insane God. movie yeah it's a pretty insane movie but i think that's what made it so good yeah was like everything was called for i guess like yeah. sometimes when some of that stuff isn't really called for mm-hmm. it, it definitely is like takes a hit mm-hmm. but that was like one of those movies where everything like like made a point and like mm-hmm. it, like the violence wasn't gratuitous it was like definitely called for mm-hmm. um but yeah i definitely like the idea where you're going with this i think it would be interesting to yeah because like there's still prawns like all over the world there's just that one ship left in south africa we don't even really necessarily know we know like they went back home but like would mm-hmm. they have come back like the thought is would they have come back or were there other sh- were there other ships on the planet like we don't know that so yeah. we could say this was maybe another ship maybe even district 10 yeah <laughs> <I'm just kidding>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the district 10 ship that's yeah. in mexico city or something but i like the idea of like bringing in mexico and like the grunginess that mexico provides right like is similar to like joannesburg mm-hmm. and like that that grunge exactly, is like really yeah. what gave that movie a lot of like feel was just that location it was like it's not something you really see in movies right like, really at all i remember elysium yeah it was uh it took place in detroit essentially they in but mexico. they shot in mexico and like uh there we go right there like yeah i mainly wanted to go for that feel and i i mean i think uh um uh neil blumkamp uh, had the right idea of going to mexico for that film but mm-hmm. like you know just why not have it take place in mexico actually yeah, yeah definitely so i can get behind that i like that i think we have some we have like a good groundwork for where we could go with the sequel mm-hmm. i think you have a great setting and uh like a social a social message that you want to uh bring up and yeah. kind of discuss in the in the constraints of a fantasy movie. right <laughs> yeah because we have the same problem with like you know race but like you know with the different species though you know of course like like are we going to see the world like is it going to be a better place to where maybe all races are like accepted and get along like mm-hmm. but they're like fuck these prawns and shit mm-hmm. or you know are we actually going to figure out a way to get along with them and live humanely or you know just live together but i don't see that happening if that ever was the case which is sad so that's why i'd like think it'd be cool like where they're all segregated in district nine for the sequel i want them to be living but like trying to still fight for where they're equals and can work the same job or something Mm -hmm. yeah because prawns gotta eat Mm -hmm. gotta make that money so that there is overall my entire sequel for District 9. I have the whole plot down. I mean, I mainly focused on the themes. I didn't know I didn't really flesh out too many characters. But I just mainly saw like a resistance type, like whether it's like, I mean, I'll just like use Rogue One as an example. But like, you know, just getting three or four solid characters that you would follow throughout the movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's like kind of where I see the sequel kind of going along. Mm-hmm. I can get behind it. I like it. I think it's a different look. I love the social message, of course. Mm -hmm. I think that that's what made District 9 such an impact. Like, it was a cultural impact. Everyone loved it. It was, I think it's one of the biggest, like, highest grossing films that's, like, not franchised, at least as of late. Yeah. Like, now that everything is just franchise fatigue. And and still had a low budget, too, as well. Yeah, yeah, still had a a really low budget for how much I I made. It was only, like, 9 million or something. (laughs) District 9 million? Yeah, (laughs) District 9 million. Maybe that came out of my ass, but yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So, anyways, I can get behind it. What are we going to do next week? Glad you asked what you're going to do next week, my friend. I'm going to want you to do Poultry Guys. Want to give a quick shout-out to Random Street Theater. Thanks for your comments. Appreciate it. 
been on a trauma binge lately and actually just recently this year you forced me to watch uh you didn't force me but you told you highly forced recommended you. me you uh tied me up but yeah you just uh told me to give it a watch and it was actually a really fun watch i enjoyed watching it like crazy it was so freaking funny and yeah, so let's week. I'd, next week, I'd like to hear your thoughts for a Poultry Guy sequel. So yeah, I'm kind of a trauma fan for the most part. Not like every movie, but I, you know, I put it on. You know, if it's late and mm-hmm. enjoy it, uh, even if they are really silly. You know, I'm a fan. Uh, so I'll be talking Poultry Guys t- two piece drumstick <laughs> next week on Sequeled.